morning service. Glory to God. We are blessed to be here this morning. First of all, we welcome the Holy Spirit who is already in our midst. Uh, glory to God. The worship team as they come to minister. The musicians as they play this morning. Those in the booths, God, who are operating. Glory to God this morning. We pray for them. Lord God, we pray for those uh, Oh God, in YouTube land, glory to God, we pray this morning. If there is someone under your juniper tree this morning, will you rise up, glory to God. Oh God, if you are there 38 years, this morning is a morning when you can take up your bed and walk. Glory to God, if you are like the woman with the issue of blood, reach out and touch Jesus' helmet, his help, help this morning. Glory to God and receive your victory. Lord, if you are at the well, like the woman at the well, seeking, but you cannot find, will you reach out and touch Jesus? Drink from the well that will never run dry this morning. Glory to God, all belong it unto you this morning, God. Oh, within ourselves we are helpless, but if we give everything to you, God, you can work it out, and you are the best one, glory to God, to receive our burden this morning, glory to God, and make it light, Lord God, you said come to you, come to you and lay everything at your feet this morning. Glory to God as we anticipate the word this morning from your servant, glory to God. We just pray God that you will use him in a very special way. And God, we pray that our hearts and our minds, uh, glory to God, will be at a place to hear from you this morning. Because that is what makes the difference, God, when we come into your house. Uh, empty we shall leave full. You are here, moving in the mist. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, that's why I call you, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, that is who you are. Yeah, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, that is who you are. You are here, you are here, and he's moving. Oh God, we worship you. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. You are here. You are here. And you're working in this place. Working in this yes, we worship you. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Yes, somebody you. call him your way maker. Way maker. Miracle promise, promise keeper, light in the dark. My God, that is who you are. Yes, He is your way maker. Miracle promise keeper, light in the dark. My God, that is who you are. Calling me your way. And he's your life. 
you are here and you're mending every heart. Hallelujah. I worship you. Hallelujah. I worship you. You are here and you're turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here and you're shifting the atmosphere. I worship you. I worship you. You are here and moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. Call him your way maker. Way maker. Miracle. He's a miracle worker. You gotta believe it. Hey, he's my God. That is who you are. He is, he is our way maker. Way maker. Miracle. And he works out a miracle. You'll never be alone. That is who you are. Last time, no music. Waymaker, waymaker. Every hand should be lifted right now. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. If you believe He's a waymaker, please lift your hand. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh God, last time we call you our way maker, way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a way maker. Thank you for providing a way when there seems no way. We're crying out to you, Heavenly Father. We're crying out to you, Jesus. Tears are the only language he can understand. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I have the announcements 
for this Sunday, June the 27th. It is our last Sunday in the month of June. Hallelujah. God has sustained us. He has brought us through. You know, we say these dates, oh, today is June 27th. No, this is the day that the Lord has made and he has allowed us to rejoice and to be glad in it. Hallelujah. With breath in our body. Hallelujah. You're not in Florida. You're not waiting to see if your loved one is under the rubble. We are here giving God praise this morning. And we remember our brothers and our sisters in other places who are sustaining challenges. These are the announcements for Sunday, June the 27th. We are delighted that you are here at Destiny Cathedral for worship today. Amen. We also welcome persons who are joining us on YouTube Live for worship today. Hallelujah. We're also happy to announce that for the very first time and since the pandemic, new members will be received into fellowship today in the service. Praise God, praise God. The family's growing, amen, amen. And for the first time in our church's history, we will be receiving international members also. Amen, amen, amen. This is a day of excitement and celebration. Children's Connect will be held today, and if you desire to have the link sent to you for today's session, please call Sister Marcia at 516-410-4458, where our children gather, where they connect on their level, and they are doing great works in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Noonday prayer is held every Monday on Zoom. We're still conducting a noonday prayer for Mondays on Zoom. We'd like for you to join us for this important time of prayer as we lift critical needs before the Lord. So please submit all prayer requests as soon as possible. The Lord has been receiving our prayers. The Lord has been blessing. The Lord has been sustaining. Join us on Mondays at noon. Then the Bible series that is conducted on Tuesday evenings, that continues. We are in the series Spiritual Christian Living. Spiritual Christian Living. That's on Tuesday at 7.30, also on Zoom. This week, we'll be continuing with the topic, spiritual relationships. And there is a spiritual aspect to every one of our relationships. So we invite you to join us on Tuesday as we continue exploring this healthy topic. Amen? Once again, your faithful contributions sustain this ministry of Destiny Cathedral. And here are the ways that you can continue to do so or join us now by way of Zell or PayPal, that's a digital uh, response for contributions. You'll use the email contact at destinycathedral.org or by the way of check or money order payable to Destiny Cathedral Inc. And you can mail your contribution into our physical address, Destiny Cathedral Incorporated, 536 South Franklin Street, that's Hempstead, New York, 11550, where we are located. Remember, your tithes and your offerings are tax deductible. Next, all of our members and attendees, you can guarantee, you can be assured that you and your families are continually in our prayers during these changing times. Pastor Lady Cheryl, the church, is praying daily, more than once a day, for the needs of the people, for the needs of the nation, for the needs of the kingdom of God. So we are continually, continually praying. And when you are in a place, when you may be weak, know that the church is praying on your behalf. Amen? Amen. Amen. We remind all of our virtual attendees that the Sunday morning worship can be accessed by going to Destiny Cathedral YouTube, and that begins at 11 a.m. So starting next Sunday, you will not receive the link. You will go directly to Destiny Cathedral YouTube beginning at 11 a.m. and still be able to participate and join us in the service on Sunday mornings. Amen? Finally, for our messages, all of our sermons, our messages can be viewed on YouTube, Facebook, and our website. And our website address 
is Destiny Cathedral underscore 2021. Destiny Cathedral underscore 2021. Take some time to go to our website, meet and greet us. You're able to leave comments on the messages. You're able to go back and refresh yourself on the word of God that was brought forth to deliver to us on the various weeks. To God be the glory for all the wonderful things that he has allowed Destiny Cathedral to lead in, to participate in, and to sustain our work. Our work is not in vain. Amen. I would ask that you would rise on your feet, those that are able, as we prepare for the stewardship ministry, another form of worship unto the Lord. Some of you may have already sent your offerings as we do during the week, as we have access 24 hours a day for that ministry. So we give God thanks as he has allowed us to grow in all areas. And I want to read from Proverbs chapter 3 this morning, verses 9 and 10. And it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth. Honor him with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your bonds will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. The word of God says we to honor with the wealth that he has bestowed upon us when we return it unto the Father. We are honoring him. We are worshiping him. And it says then, then after we honor him, our bonds will be filled to overflowing. The very same hand that you gave your offering, your tithe, God will put an overflow into your hand, manifest it for use in this life. And so we thank God this morning that he commands us to honor him. And with that obedience, we will be blessed. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, the one who gives, the one who provides, the one whose wealth we are stewards of. We thank you, God, for entrusting us with the wealth to honor you. We thank you, God, that we have understanding this morning, that throughout your word you said you only want a tenth, a tithe, to be returned. That is our minimum. That's the least we can honor you with, God. And Father, you make provision through sacrifice, through income, through the ways that you have challenged us, God, to be faithful in all things. So Father, today we continue to be faithful in our tithes and offerings, God, knowing, Lord, that we are blessing the house of God, knowing, Lord, that there is upkeep for your kingdom, and Father, when we are blessed, we are blessed to be a blessing. And it is in that, God, that we smile and we are grateful and we recognize your mercy and your love that you are blessing us to be a blessing. The word of God says you can't beat God given. So Father, today we offer everything that you have given us to offer today, God. You know exactly where we stand. You know exactly what you have provided. And Father, we come today not with a closed fist, but with an open hand, extending the blessing, extending the love, extending what you have deposited in us, that it may be used for the wealth and the glory of your kingdom for now and forevermore. And we say, God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Please be guided by the ushers as they come before you for your gifts. They will receive you. Amen. And uh, we are going to be doing something for the first time here at Destiny Cathedral. We will be, we will be receiving members into fellowship. We will be receiving members into...
scholarship for the first time since the pandemic, and not only for the first time since the pandemic, but also we will be receiving members internationally. Amen? So we give God praise. We give God glory. Gabby, Gabby Lord, Gabby Roach, I'm sorry. Gabby Roach, would you come? Gabby has been participating in the ministry during Zoom. She's a recently, uh, recently arrived here from Barbados, and she's studying in the United States. She's also a citizen of the United States, but she's now here residing, and uh, she has been with us even while she was in Barbados, and now she's here studying. She wants to, she is going to be taking fellowship with us. So we give God thanks for her. We have seen her dance on several occasions, minister in song, and a couple of occasions, and we thank God for her. We want to thank God also for Sister Kimberly Salmon. Amen. We thank God for this wonderful woman of God who is on fire for the Lord. Amen. Sister Kimberly and her husband, Brother Dwayne, recently had a baby, and uh, we thank God that we uh, recently dedicated the little baby, and that broke the ice, amen, to get them back into the house of the Lord. <laughs> amen. So we thank God that we have them here. Amen. We also give God praise that we have Sister Princina Rapanos and Brother Rick Rapanos. Come on, let's welcome them in from all the way. All the way across the other side of the continent, from Vancouver, Canada. Amen. We welcome you, both of you. Uh, you may not know, but Sister Princina was one of the founding members of our church. Amen. She, she was present at our very first meeting that was held in our basement there in Rosedale, and uh, she has come all the way full circle. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And she went all the way to Canada and brought her husband with her back. See what God does. She, she went away to bring Brother Rick back with her. And so we are welcoming you today into the service. You're looking beautiful there, looking beautiful. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise today. Hallelujah! There are some others. There are some others that will be coming on board, and we are going to welcome them when the time comes. Amen? When the time comes. Praise the Lord, we are going to welcome them. We took the time to take all of these individuals. Of course, the Rapanos did their, their uh, preparation by way of Zoom, and... Uh, we, in fact, everyone did the preparation by way of Zoom, and we thank God for this technology, amen? So now we can do so much, so much with this technology. So they have been properly prepared, and they're ready uh, to, to enter into fellowship at Destiny Cathedral. Sister uh, Trudy, um, who got baptized last week, is not, uh, was not available to be, to be receiving into fellowship today, so we will be receiving her into fellowship as soon as she will, as soon as she is here. Amen. So we want to remind our candidates, and we want to let our church know that we take this event, this activity, very, very seriously. Amen. We are not about just bringing numbers into the body. We we welcome everyone who is desirous of being a member of our fellowship, but we take the time to prepare. The people. Yes. Amen. First for water baptism and then for membership. And in fact, next week, Reverend Sandra is going to be sharing in that area about the importance of church membership. Okay. Okay. What they're saying today as they come to, to take fellowship with us is having been led as they believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and on the profession of their faith in Christ, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
They do now in the presence of God, the angels, and this local assembly most joyfully enter into covenant with one another and this local body of Christ. They're also saying that they will, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, walk in Christian love. They will strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, in holiness, in comfort, to sustain its worship, ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of this ministry, to cover, help us cover the expenses of the church, to help us relieve the stresses of the poor, and to spread the gospel throughout all nations. So they are committing to joining with us in the area, in every area of ministry. They're also saying that they will engage in family worship and secret devotions. They will seek the salvation of their relatives and acquaintances. They will walk circumspectly in the world. They will be just in all of their dealings, faithful in all of their engagements, and they will avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. They will abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage or any such substance and they will be zealous in their efforts to advance the kingdom of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they're also saying that they will endeavor to watch over one another in brotherly love in other words they'll acknowledge that they are their brother's keeper to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness, to cultivate Christian sympathy, to be slow to speak, and to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and be mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. In other words, they're committing to striving for the unity of the body. Amen? Where there's unity, there is what? Thank you. And finally, they are entering into covenant today, and they're saying that, I, that they will moreover engage that should they relocate from this church, should they move from here to Florida, to wherever, that they will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church to carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of the Word of God. And this is why this day is so very important. Because this is a commitment not only to the local church, but to the church universal. This is a commitment to the kingdom of God, to be participating, be a participant in the kingdom of God universal. So it doesn't end here. This is just the, as it were, the beginning for some and the continuation for others. So this is their covenant, the covenant that we have here, the church's covenant. And all of us who are members of Destiny Cathedral have committed ourselves to this covenant. And I want to challenge this, this group, those joining us, joining us by video and also the ladies who are here to sign this covenant and keep it as a reminder of your promise. A covenant is a pledge. A covenant is an agreement between two persons or an organization and a, an individual. And there are set there are set tenets for each for each section of the covenant. And so just as we enter into a marriage covenant with a husband or a wife. We are entering, these folks are entering into a serious covenant with the, this local assembly. So, we want to ask you to respond affirmatively to these three questions at this time, after which we will have the members of our board come, and uh, we may not give you the right hand of fellowship, but we'll give you the elbow at least 
of fellowship today to welcome you into fellowship after we pray. So just respond affirmatively at this time. Are you committed to living your life according to biblical standards, standards that are outlined in the scriptures as you have been instructed? Yes, we will. Yes, we are. Thank you. Second question. Do you understand the covenant that you are entering into and are committed to upholding it with the help of the Lord? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Will you recognize your pastor and the leaders of this church as those who are responsible to instruct, encourage, counsel, and correct when necessary because it is our spiritual responsibility to care for your soul? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So at this time, we're going to have our board come. Brother Owen, would you come at this time? Lady Cheryl and also Urban Sandra, uh, stand, just stand behind them. Or, and you, I would ask you to turn in, in my direction at this time. Okay, amen. And uh, the other member of our board, Sister Shireen, is not here today, but we will receive this group of folks into fellowship. I want to ask the congregation to stand with us. Reach your hands here in their direction as well. Praise God. Uh, Sister Princina and uh, Brother Rick, we are praying for you too at this time. Amen? Father God, we are so grateful. We are so thankful that, that you have brought us to this point, this place of growth, this place of maturity, this place of responsibility in our ministry where we could receive new members into our fellowship, not only locally, but also internationally. We thank you, O oh God, for each of these individuals that have committed themselves to the work that lies ahead of them. You said that God, that anyone who puts their hands to the plow and looks back or turns back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. And so, Father, I pray that even as these ones commit themselves, Lord, to serving and ministering in this church. We pray, O oh God, that you would help them to understand the calling that you have placed upon their lives. First of all, a calling to live holy and circumspect lives before you. I pray that, God, that they will seek the, the salvation of their loved ones, that there will be living testimonies of what it is to be a born-again believer and even so a member of a local assembly. We pray that God, that you will give them the grace that they need in times of challenge, in times of difficulties. God, we pray that our church will be a source of encouragement to them. We will be a source of edification, building them up spiritually. We pray that God, that they will recognize that this is just the beginning of a long journey that God, you have placed them on. So, Lord, even now, we commit them in your care. We cover them in your precious blood. And, Lord, we welcome them today into fellowship, not of the, in the universal church, but of this local fellowship in Jesus' precious name. And we all say amen, amen and amen. amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. We have your membership certificates for you that we will give to you. But we welcome you into fellowship at this time. God bless you. Our board will welcome you as well. Okay. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. We just while we have while we have the Rapanos couple all the way in Vancouver, Canada, we just want to ask them to say a word or two at this time while we have you amen this is not something that we'll be doing on a regular basis but I want to say it took our technicians a while to be able to bring you in so we don't want to lose this miss out this up on this opportunity so let's bring greetings to the church quickly uh, sister Princina 
if you care to. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, we having some trouble hearing you correctly, but I hope I'm doing the right thing. I just want to say thank you so very much for allowing us to be a part of the membership of Destiny Cathedral. We just want to give God praise and thanks. We feel so loved by Destiny Cathedral family, Amen. even though we are so far away from you. And we thank God for that. Thank God for putting you all in our, into our lives that even though we are so far away, we felt like if we are right there with you. Praise and God. And so we give God praise and thanks. We love you all so very much. And I'm going to let Rick say something to you as well. Good morning, Destiny Cathedral. Good morning, all the people there and all the people that are online. We are so happy for this moment of coming into membership and the other people in membership as well. We so much wanted to become a members of this church because we believe 100% in the leadership. We know that yeah. this church is a church that loves God, a church that teaches the word of God without compromise. So we give thanks to Pastor Paul Patrick, Lady Cheryl, Reverend Saunders, the deacons, and all the leadership. And some of you people there we know, and some of them we've learned to know through Zoom and prayer meeting. And we truly believe that this is a church of community that cares for each other. The members and the people of Destiny really love God and the Word of God. And we are so thankful to be part of these people that are in Destiny Cathedral. And we look so forward to... to praising God in your church, and we look forward to serving in your church, Amen. and we just uh, love everybody there, and we are so thankful today. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to uh, give thanks, recognize Sister uh, Elania Long John is with us today. God bless you. Amen. A wonderful neighbor, friend of our church. Amen. We thank God also, Sister Anita is back with us today. We give God praise. Amen. We thank God. We believe that, that our visitor in the, in the rear of the church there is our sister uh, Kimberly's mom. We welcome you as well today. Praise the Lord. And all of our regular members, we're glad to have you. We thank God that Minister Jackie could be here today. Mr. Minister Jackie has been challenged, but God is good. God brought you. He's bringing you through, brother. God is good. Amen. 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 Please keep him in your prayers. Well, we're going to be getting into the word of God, and we, the time is really moving nicely. Amen. So are you ready for the word of God? Amen. I believe that God has a word for his people Today, we want to give a shout out to all the folks who have joined us via YouTube. Bless you, God bless you. We thank you. We thank God for each and every one of you joining with us Sunday after Sunday. Amen. Today, we want to share a word as God has given to us from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and uh, verses 42 to 47. We'll be doing the reading from the NIV version of the scriptures. And the word of God reads thus. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. And they sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. And they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. And I believe that what we've seen today is the fulfillment of a church that is healthy. My subject today is qualities of a healthy church. Qualities of a healthy church. I've been hearing and learning over the past few days and weeks 
about churches that are not just struggling, but churches that are actually closing, have closed. And here we are today on the final, day, final Sunday of the second month that we are back in the house of God, and we were able to receive four new members into fellowship. So we give God praise. We give him all the glory and all the praise. Despite the intellectual and scientific developments in the world in these modern times, the needs of the people and the nations of the world are becoming greater and seemingly more complex. It is like the more we know, the less we understand. It is like the more we gain, the less we have. It is like the, the greater the modes of communication, the less people seem to be listening, or at least listening to the right things. The more we envision the unity of our nation, the more we seem to be divided. The more the world produces billionaires, the greater the numbers of the poor in the world are becoming. Each time the scientists develop a new treatment or vaccine, we hear of a new variant or a new virus that's popping up somewhere. The more guns are being sold for the sake of self-protection and peace, the more lives are being lost by gun violence. It seems as though in the world we are taking two steps forward and three steps backward. The world seems to be looking for solutions. The world is looking for a means of solving his problems. But I've come with a word for us today. God has a word for us today. That, and the word is that Jesus Christ was always the answer to the world's problems, and he continues to be the solution to the world's problems today. <laughs> Jesus continues to be the solution. And thank God, there's good news, and the good news is that Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God is still in control of the world's affairs. Please take heart. Do not be afraid. There's no reason for you to be nervous, because God isn't nervous. God is the sovereign God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he rules supremely over the affairs of this world. <laughs> and despite the flaws and the deficiencies and the failures in the church, it is the church that has been sent with the message of hope for the world. It is the church that has the means of deliverance for the world. It is the church within which the Holy Spirit of God dwells. Hallelujah and empowers us to bring hope to the world. Here's a reminder. The church, the church, as the church, you are not responsible to make the world listen. I want you to understand. As the church of Jesus Christ, you are not responsible to make the world listen. Sometimes you're preaching or you're teaching or you're speaking to people in the world, offering them the hope that is in the scriptures, and they don't seem to be listening. They don't seem to be hearing. Our responsibility is not to make them listen. Our responsibility is to give them the word of God. <laughs> give them the word of God by any means possible. And as one wise person once said, preach. And if necessary, use words. In other words, our lives are to be living testimonies of the resurrection, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ. However, in order for the church to be effective in our mission, in our mission, the commission that was given to Christ needs to be carried out. And I thank God that we are going to train up these new uh, members. We are going to inform and instruct and encourage and build them up 
Amen. In the Lord. And I tell you, as your pastor, I, as I look over this congregation today, I am pleased with what I see. I see a bunch of people who are not living in the flesh, but they are living by faith. They are walking by faith. Hallelujah. You are here because you are a person of faith. You are here because you believe that God is able to keep that which, hallelujah, we commit unto him. You are here because you love the Lord. There's some churches that were boasting of 30 and 40,000 members before the pandemic. And on Sunday mornings, you have to have three and four services. But when you have Bible study or prayer meeting, you can hardly find a handful of people. Because you know people follow people. And there's some people who just love to be in and among a crowd. They love to be in a crowd because they are hardly seen. You don't know what they're involved with, what their activities are. So there are people who come into a big church and they hide out. But I thank God that you here this morning are a good representation of what this church is who this church really is and even when we come on bible study and prayer meetings we have a good number a good representation 80 to 90 percent of our membership participates in bible study and prayer and this is why i'm happy and this is why i'm happy the church is called to make a difference in the world and the only way we can make a difference is if we are actually different. Before we can make a difference in the world, we have to be the stimuli to make the difference in the world. If you take a glass of water, if I take this water and pour it in another bottle that has water in it, it's the same water, it's gonna look the same way. But if I take a bottle of ink or dye and I pour it into a bottle of water, what happens? is it's going to change the color. It's going to impact the water. So the, the ink has to be different. The dye has to be different to make a difference in the water. And it's the same way with the church. And Jesus said, listen, I'm not calling you out of the world because, listen, you have to die and go to heaven. But I'm calling you in the world. And though you are in the world, you cannot be of the world. We have to be different from the world. And the church, the church that is healthy, the church that is, that is healthy is a church that is different from the world. Too many congregations want to appease the world. Too many congregations want to be politically correct. But the word of God says that we are to be the salt. We are to be the light of the world that the world is filled with darkness. But when the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, we have the light of Jesus Christ that is able to penetrate the darkness of the world. The world is insipid in its taste. The world is tasteless. But God says, Jesus said, we are to be like salt. And it takes salt to make food have taste. We need to be different. There have been many moments of revival throughout world history. Many moments of revival. More recent revivals in the 20th century included those of the 1904 to the 1905 Welch revival. In 1906, many of you might have heard of the Azusa Street revival. And then in, 19, in the 1930s, there was the Balochia uh, revival in Uganda and Eastern Africa. In the 1970s, there was the Jesus People movement with the hippies. You know, love and peace, peace and love. And then there was the Toronto Blessing revival among the vineyard churches at, that began in 1994. And the last major movement uh, uh, in the church was the Bronzeville revival among the Assembly of God churches in Pensacola, Florida, that began on Father's Day 
1995. Over the years, these are just a few of the most recent revivals that took place in the church. But I want to say that the world is ripe for a fresh revival. The world is ready. It's been over 20 some odd years since we have heard of a true revival. All of these revivals had three common threads. One, they all started because the church had moved away from the principles of church health, from being healthy spiritually. The church was not spiritually healthy before these revivals occurred. And I want to say today that we are living in a time when the church needs some spiritual help. The church needs to become spiritually healthy. Secondly, these revivals also started because there was a nucleus of people who were hungry and thirsty for righteousness. They were hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And that many of these revivals started with prayer meetings. Many of them started out with individuals who went into their prayer closets and their prayer rooms into prayer, spent time in prayer, weeks at a time in prayer and fasting. But I also want to say that all of these revivals pretty much ended in similar fashion, one way or another. The flesh, for one thing, got in the way. And whether for, for some of them, at least for the Azusa Street uh, revival, racism, believe it or not, got in the way of that revival. Or uh, heresy, false teachings got in the way, uh, as was the case with the Toronto blessing, or disunity. And in the case of the Brownville revival, there was a situation where everyone wanted to do their own thing. Everyone, think, everyone wanted to do their own thing. What the world and the church needs is another revival. We are right for a revival. In fact, the world is ready for another revival. Not just a revival, but one like the Acts 2 revival. One like the Acts 2 revival. You see, the scriptures let us know in the Old Testament that 400 years passed by from the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew, and the, 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 we, are, we are told that the prophets didn't speak. We are told that God did not speak to the people directly. We are told that there was an absence of the presence of God and the word of God. And 400 years between the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew, there was silence in heaven. Can you imagine how people felt? People must have felt lost. People must have felt empty. People must have been wondering, where should we turn to next? But I want to let you know that there's so many churches closed today. There's so many churches that are closing down today. There's so many churches that are empty today that people are wondering what in the world is happening to the church. The church needs a revival. But thank God in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, in chapter 2, something happened that never happened before. The Bible says, as with all other, all other uh, times of, of revival, the people were in the upper room and they were in prayer. You see, if we take the time to seek God, if we hunger and thirst after God, if we hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God, God will show up. And the Bible lets us know on the day of Pentecost, while they were there praying, the Spirit of God came in like a mighty rushing wind. And the Spirit of God baptized the 120 who were in the upper room. And something happened. Something happened. They were empowered with the power of the Holy Spirit for service. What we need today is the power of the Holy Ghost at work in our lives. And here, here in our text, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, a very unique passage of scripture. It lets us know that there were four things that occurred that caused this body of believers to be, first of all, to be the burden of the church of Jesus Christ, and then to be the most powerful church that ever existed on the face of the earth. If we could draw a graph 
of the church from today going back to that day, we will find that the time that the church was most powerful was on the day of Pentecost. The time that the church was most united was on the day of Pentecost. The time that the most miracles occurred was in that early church. The time when people were willing to make great sacrifices. The Bible says that people sold their goods and brought them into the house of God and everyone's needs were met. Because the people offered themselves. The text wasn't even written yet. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, they offered themselves as living sacrifices. But there were four qualities, four qualities that were evident and described here in this text that lets us know that if any church is going to be healthy, it needs to display, it needs to have these four qualities. And, and new converts, those of you who are joining us for the first time today, I want you to take a note of these four qualities. Because if you are persistent, if you embrace these qualities, you will find that you will become a healthy or you will be a healthy believer. And because you are healthy believers, the church will be healthy. The church will be healthy. The four qualities are here. One. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. There are times today when people don't, they have no interest in Bible study. They have no interest in even reading the scriptures. They have the Bibles and they keep them on the shelves as a monument. But one of the prerequisites for a healthy Christian is diligent Bible study. They studied with the apostles. They didn't only study the Word of God with the apostles, but they applied the Word of God. It is one thing to sit and hear the Word of God. It is something else to understand what is being said and to apply it to our daily lives. When the Word of God is applied to the lives of the people, something happens. You know what happens? Their lives become transformed. Their minds become transformed and their lives become transformed. If you are stuck in gear as a Christian, if you find that your life is your spiritual life, it has become stagnated. It is because your mind has become stagnated and because your mind has become static, your spiritual life has become static as well. I'll argue that to the day I die. This is why I was telling the Bible study group the other day, last Monday, that I'm so happy for the people who come on to Bible study week after week. Listen, it is more important to be in Bible study than to be here on Sunday mornings. Because Paul says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. You see, when we come here on Sunday mornings, yes, we come to fellowship, and this is necessary, as you're going to hear in a moment. But you get a short word where it makes you feel good and you get excited and you want to go on with the Lord. And that's good. But when you feed on the Word of God, when you take the time to feast on the Word of God, the Word of God takes root in your lives and your life is transformed. The second quality and the second thing that we saw here in this early church was their fellowship as a family. First, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Secondly, their fellowship as a family. Now, fellowship, if fellowship is difficult, if not impossible, except we come together. Fellowship is difficult, if not impossible. I know that we were out for a year and some months because of COVID, and we fellowship the best way we could. Amen? We came together the best way we could because we wanted to protect each other. And we wanted to apply the wisdom that God has available to us. But fellowship is difficult, if not impossible, except we come together and connect with each other. Jesus taught about the danger of that sheep face 
if they go astray. They are vulnerable to the hungry wolves of false teaching. They're vulnerable to the hungry wolves of all types of temptations. They're vulnerable to the hungry wolves of, of every wind of doctrine. The strange sheep, when he's not fed, when he's not in the place where he should be, he can't be fed with the Word of God. He cannot be protected by godly counsel, by those who have been ordained and those who have been positioned to give counsel as leaders in the church. We are reminded in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, not to uh, forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Hallelujah. Especially as we see the coming of the Lord draw nigh. So it is important. One of the qualities of a healthy church is fellowship. Fellowship. We need to fellowship one with another. The third quality of a healthy church is the breaking of bread. And what does this text mean when it says they broke bread? The breaking of bread here refers to the partaking of the emblems of communion. It's not talking about eating bread and fish. Yeah, Jesus fed the, the multitude and he gave them bread and fish. But this is a different breaking of bread. That communion emblems is an opportunity for every believer to rededicate themselves to the Lord, recommit themselves to Christ, to examine themselves to see whether they're living according to the Word of God. The communion emblems are necessary, necessary for believers who are truly in fellowship with the saints, with the body of Christ. Partaking of the emblems is an opportunity to testify that we are in fellowship. We are living in a time when everyone seems to want to do their own thing. Can somebody say amen? amen. All right. There is a rebellious spirit that's in the world today. There's a rebellious spirit in the schools and colleges. There's a rebellious spirit in Washington among the politicians. There's a rebellious spirit that is lurking and entering into the homes, even the homes of Christians. There's a rebellious spirit, but the house of God is to be a place where there is order and a place where there is accountability. And if individuals feel that they're going to be rebellious in their schools, if they think that they're going to be rebellious on the streets, or they're going to be rebellious in their homes, and rebellion is going to be engaged in the house of God, look out. You are at Destiny Cathedral now. We are, we are a church, amen, in the community for the community. And every member, including myself, will be held accountable. Amen. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40, to let everything be done decently and in order. We've been called to carry ourselves circumspectly. And if we say, yea, it means yea. And if we say, nay, it should mean nay. And if you say you're going to show up at a certain time, except something, some, some, some weird, weird circumstances occur, let's, let's, keep our, let's be people of integrity. Let's be people of integrity. And this is why I have to come here every Sunday and commend our leaders in various ministries because this church cannot function without people who are willing to put their hands to the plow and come and clean the sanctuary. People who are willing to come and commit themselves to the worship ministry. People who are willing to come and prepare the technology to make sure that people can be here when they need to be here. And all the other elders, the deacons, and all the other workers. We thank God for each and every one of you. Do we need more workers? We sure do. We sure do need more workers. So the house of God needs to have order. The breaking of bread, the partaking of the emblems, is symbolic of individuals who are willing to follow order, individuals who are willing to be accountable to the leadership and the ministry of the church. The fourth quality of a healthy church is prayer. And I give God praise for our ministry, this church. This church truly is a praying church. You know what? We've had to be, we've had to be a praying church over the last few months 
throughout this COVID situation. Amen. If we, if, we, if we did nothing else, if we just came together and prayed, amen, that would have been sufficient. I want to let you know that there is no substitute for prayer. Just as there is no substitute for the Word of God, there is no substitute for fellowship, there's no substitute for the communion emblems, there is no substitute for water baptism. Similarly, there is no substitute for prayer. Hallelujah. The prayer of the believer is necessary. Prayer is to the health of the believer as breathing is to the life of a person who is living. Prayer is to the health of the believer as breathing is to the life of any living person. I don't think, lost my mic. Don't you think, don't you think for one moment that the church comprises of this structure? Don't you think that the church is comprised of the seat that you're sitting in? Don't you think for one moment that the church is the structure that we see around us? You are the church. And for the church to be healthy, you need to be healthy. The bodies, the people need to be healthy. So prayer is to the health of the believer as breathing is to the life of a living person. Just to, make a, just to share a quick quote from Martin Luther, the monk. He says, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. The great monk, Martin Luther, who started the great reformation. We cannot be a Christian without praying effectively, praying faithfully. Therefore, the church will be alive and healthy when believers are engaged in these four activities. In closing, in closing, the text doesn't end there. The text provides six evidences of a church that is healthy. Six evidences here found in the text. One, the people were amazed at the power of God revealed in the church. The people both in the church and outside the church were amazed at the power of God. When was the last time people were amazed at the power of God displayed in the body of Christ? Secondly, supernatural miracles were performed by the leaders, by the apostles. The Bible says that the apostles performed supernatural miracles. Blinded eyes were opened. The crippled were healed. The dead were raised. Hallelujah. Broken limbs were mended. People who were diseased, people who were filled with, with demons were delivered because the apostles were empowered, hallelujah, with power from on high. The third sign of evidence of a healthy church was the church experienced great unity. The church experienced great unity. They had all things in common. Unity and strength go hand in hand. A house divided, thank you, cannot stand. The fourth sign, the fourth evidence that demonstrated that the church was healthy was there was charity among the believers. Everyone's needs were met. People shared and had things in common. As we heard this morning, we are taught that the Old Testament standard for giving and worshiping God was to bring the tithe into the house of God. But do you know under the new covenant, the tithe is just the beginning. The tithe is just the beginning of our giving to God the amount of giving we should give back to the Lord. And the Word of God says we should give from the top, from the first part that we receive, not the last what's left over. Because if we give after everything is all paid and our, all the food has been bought, we've gone to Red Lobster and out of the garden, we have nothing left to give for God. Well, when God blesses us, we are to give from the top. The Bible says that this brother here, this brother here, he, he had some, some property, and he sold it, and he gave it to the apostles. Now, we are not saying for you to sell your land and bring it to the church. Certainly not. But we are saying that God's people needs to be diligent stewards of the things that he has entrusted to us. 
We need to be faithful stewards of that which he's given to us. The fifth sign of a church that is healthy is there was great respect for the church in the world. The church didn't walk around with their heads down. The church didn't walk around in fear. In fact, when the Lord, when the word of God told the apostles to preach, they preached. Wherever they went, they went with boldness. Even when the authorities were telling them to don't preach in this name anymore, the Bible says, should we obey men or should we obey God? And this is the attitude that we need to have if we're going to be strong, if we're going to be healthy, and if we're going to be people who will display faith. Should we obey God or should we obey men? This is why I am personally hesitant to take any money from the government as a church. It is a shame to any church to have to go to the secular government to receive sustenance to take care of itself. And this is why it doesn't matter if our offerings go down, we know that God will bring them back up. We know that God is faithful. He's able to take uh, two fish and a bread uh, and multiply uh, and cause them to be sufficient. We should never have to go to a secular government to ask them for any monies to keep the church going, to keep our lights on, to maintain our electric bill. We need to trust in the Lord. And when we show the world that we're not depending on them, we can operate independent of them. We don't have to follow their guidelines. When they tell us, oh, two men can get married and two women can get married, we can tell them, oh, that's nonsense. That's good for you. But that's not what we teach here in this world, not what the Word of God teaches. That's not what the Word of God teaches. When the world says that oh, all the young people are living together, they're sleeping together, they're living together. No, no, no. That is not for God's people. The Word of God calls it adultery. The Word of God calls it fornication. We don't have to go back into the church for anything. This is, the, this is our standard. This is our standard. And then sixthly, the sign, the qualities of a large church, of a healthy church, is the Lord added to the church those who were being saved. As we saw here today, the Lord is adding. I'm believing God that every month, every month, we will be able to receive new members into fellowship. There are others right now who are waiting in the wings to be baptized. There are others right now who are waiting in the wings to receive fellowship. And we're going to believe God. Hallelujah. As we carry out the great commission, hallelujah, we are going to first of all be a healthy church. We're going to commit to being a healthy church. And when our church is healthy, we don't have to worry about the numbers. We won't have to worry about the finances. We will already be united. We will speak with one voice. And we will be effective in the world to bring the gospel to a lost and a dying world. I'm believing in God for miracles. Are you looking forward to miracles? I am expecting to see miracles. We've had some attacks by the enemy as we expected. We know that when you go into the realm of the spirit, the enemy will show up. But listen, our eyes are fixed. Our eyes are focused on Jesus. Our eyes are on the Lord. We are not gonna be wavering to the left or to the right. Our eyes are going to stay focused on the Lord. And we're not going to walk in fear, but we're going to walk in faith. Let us stand together this, af this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Qualities of a healthy church. And I know the enemy right now is sitting by plotting. I know that he is sitting by planning. You know how I know? Because he has his work to do. And no one has to wake the enemy up to do his job. Huh? The enemy doesn't have to set an alarm clock so that he can get him and do his mischief. And because we know how he operates, our eyes are going to stay fixed on the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to stand on the word of God. We're going to stay committed to prayer. Hallelujah. We're going to stay committed to studying and teaching the Word of God, feeding the people of God with the Word of God. We're going to stay committed to fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
And as long as we follow these four uh, engagements, we know that we're going to be healthy. Father, right now, Lord, we bow in your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this precious day. We thank you, God, for this house, this gathering, these people, your people who have come. And Lord, they have pressed and they have, they have pushed. We know, God, that there were obstacles in their way today. Many of them felt like not coming. But Lord, they're determined to be here because you had a word for them. The individuals who were challenged in their homes, the persons who were challenged in their health, the individuals who have difficult relationships, my God, to deal with. There are those today, Lord, who are looking for jobs and others who need better jobs and greater financial blessing. Lord, I pray today that as, they, as each of us move to the place of becoming healthy and whole, we know, God, that you will open the windows of heaven and that you will pour up blessings into the lives of your people where none of us will have room to receive. Lord, I pray your blessings upon our people, not only those who are here, but those, God, who are watching on and listening on by way of YouTube this, this afternoon. God, I pray that you will minister into every home. Cause your people to recognize, Lord, the potential that the church is, that we are individually. Someone said that the church is a sleeping giant. God, we are shaking ourselves today. We're going to apply your word, live by your word. While every head is bowed, maybe there's someone here who will say, Pastor, I have heard you preach about Jesus and the church and being strong spiritually, but I need to be saved. I need to be born again. I do not know Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I, want to, I mean business for the Lord today. If there's anyone who needs Christ as their Savior, I want to pray for you. Would you just slip your hand up right where you are? Just slip your hand. Yes, I see your hand, brother, young man. Anyone would say, yes, pastor, I need to accept the Lord as my Savior. I need to be born again. I want to ask you, Kareem, to come on up here quickly. Come, come, Kareem. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Word has touched his heart. The Word has touched his heart. And he wants to be committed wholeheartedly to the Lord. Listen. There's nothing wrong with being born again and needing a fresh touch from the Lord. Maybe, maybe you're here today, you need a fresh touch from the Lord. Maybe you've been wavering in your walk with Christ and you need a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost in your life. I want you to come on down here. Come on down here. We have plenty of room over here. Come on. You need a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit in your life. Do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed. When Christ comes into our lives, when he touches us, Change happens in our lives. Hallelujah. We move from being powerless to being powerful. Hallelujah. We experience the anointing of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God for those of you who have come to the altar. We first of all thank God for your hearts being sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Help me know that there's some individuals, not here, whose hearts have become hard. Hold. Jesus said a farmer went out to sow seed one day. The seed was the same seed. And some seed fell on soil that was hard, resistant. Other seed fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up. The cares of life came and, 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 and choked the word of God. And I thank God that there were other seed that fell on good soil. Good soil. You're here today because you're a good soul. You've heard the word, you open your heart, and you're receptive to it. So I want to pray, pray with you today, even now, and ask God to, to make you sensitive to his spirit. Father God, even now, Lord, I lift up this group of young people to you, Lord. Young people, I just so, somehow sense that there's, there's someone else who needs to come to the altar. You know that you're not where you used to be. God has spoken to you today. Come, come quickly, come quickly. Someone else is here today who needs to be at this altar. Hallelujah. You don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Yes, she's coming, she's coming, she's coming, she's coming. And if there are any others, you can come now, come now. Father God, I thank you for the move of your spirit in the house today. We thank you, oh God, for the early church, the Acts church. 
Acts 2 church where the people, Lord God, had all things in common. Because, Lord, they spent time in the Word, they spent time in fellowship, Lord God, they broke bread together and they took time to pray. Lord, I pray for these individuals right now that as they have received your Word, they're here because they've received your Word. I pray, God, that they will apply the Word that they've heard today and the Word will bear fruit in their lives. God, I pray that their associates, their, their relatives will see change in their lives as they take the time to seek you, as they take the time to study your word, as they take the time to share their faith with others, to let their lives be salt and light in this world of darkness. Cover this gathering, oh God. Cover every person in this house today. Cover everyone, oh God, who's at this altar. Keep them in times of temptation. Keep them in times of testing, oh God. Open doors for them as they have opened their hearts to you today. Show yourself to be real, my God. And we thank you for doing all these things. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Change. Come on, let's sing it together. As we prepare to pronounce the benediction, I want to give you a final word of advice. You cannot meet with Jesus and change not happen in your life. Anytime you meet with Christ, change happens. Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house and he had supper with him. And by the time the supper was over, <laughs> Zacchaeus was transformed. Hallelujah. He was, his life was transformed. He said, listen, if I have stolen from anyone, I'm not only going to give it back to them, but I'm going to give it back to them four times over. Amen? Change happens when we meet with Christ. Allow that change to take place in, in each one, every one of our lives. Let's pronounce the benediction as we prepare to leave God's house. Father, we give you praise and glory. We bless your people, Lord God, today. In the name of the Father, and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Lord, go with your people this week. Cover them in your blood. Protect them from all the wiles of the enemy. Take them through, Lord God, every challenging situation. Give them the spirit of revelation, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of discernment. Cause your people, O oh God, to triumph over all the powers of darkness. And bring us back into your house, O oh God, if it's your will, next Sunday to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone says, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Well, I want to encourage all of our members to greet, greet our newly received members into fellowship today. Don't let them leave without you welcoming them into fellowship. God bless you. Yeah.